Hi and welcome to part 5 of building a CRM using Django and Vue. Today we are going to add the possibility to create teams for this application. So the first thing we need then is a new application or Django app for the team. So first we can create it by saying python manage.py start app team. And then we want to add the database model so we can tell the database what information about the team we want to store. So first we can import the user object from Django so we can connect a team owner to a team and then we can create the class for the model class team models dot model I want one field for keeping track of the team name which is a char field and can set max length to 255 and I want one field for keeping track of all of the members in the team. This is also supposed to be the, the team owner. And this is a many to many field. That means that this team can have many users. The related name for the user to the team is teams. So once we have a user, we can get all of the teams for a user. But in our case, we just want one team anyway. And then we have a foreign key to tell who created the team, so we know who the owner is. Now we set the related name, and when we delete the user, we also delete the team. And then I want one field for telling us when the team was created, and then we can save this. So then I just want to import this to the settings.py file. So if I find installed apps, you can add it at the bottom here, team.apps.teamconfig. Great. So then I can update the database by saying python manage.py make migrations and python manage.py migrate. So now we have a database model and an app for the team. So now I can go back to the to-do list and set the first task to done. Next step now is to create a serializer, just like we did for the leads. This one, we need one for the team now. So create a new file in the team folder called serializers.py. And I will need the user here as well, so I can go back to models.py just to copy it and paste it there. And I also need to import something from this Django serializers there. And we can import the team model as well. So from dot models import team. Great. And that's everything we need to import. Then we can create the user serializer because we want to serialize the information about a user in a team. So class user serializer like that. Serializers dot model serializer. And here we need to set the class meta and the model we want to use is user, which we just imported up there. And the fields we want for all of the users or all of the members is ID, username, the first name and the last name. I don't think we have added this to the application yet, but we will later, so we can just add them here anyway. And we want one serializer for the team. So class team serializer. Pass in serializers dot model serializer. And we want one field here for the members. So we just want to tell the team serializers that for the members uh, field, this one, we want to use this serializer. Members equals user serializer many equals true because it's more than one object and read only equals true because we don't want to be able to create users through the team serializer we just want to get information about the user then we set the class meta again the model here is of course the team and the fields we want to get for the team is id name and members and save 
So now we have the serializers for the team and we can create the view. So we can go back to view, I'll open up view.py at least. So we can remove this because we're not going to render anything, but we need to import view sets from the rest framework. View sets. And we need to import the team model from dot models import team and from dot serializers import team serializer. We only need that because the other serializers we used is only in here. And then we can create the view set for this. So plus team view set view set dot model view set. I need to set which serializer class we are going to use. And that's the team serializer. And query set equals team dot objects dot all. So we get all of them. And then we need to override the get query set like we did in the other view set. So def get query set self return self dot query set dot filter created by equals self dot request dot user. Here we also need to override the perform create functionality because we need to connect a user to the created by field and also add the self dot request user to the members. So def perform create. We need to pass in self and serializer. Just like that we know as on the end. And then we say obg, like uh, short for object, equals serializer dot save created by equals self dot request dot user. And since we now have the object here, we can say obg dot members dot add self dot request dot user. So now the user will be a member of the team as well obg.save so then we have that as well okay I forgot to add that we need to add the URLs here as well to make it easy I think I can just make a copy of the one inside the lead I create a new file urls.py but here we want to import the team view set of course this can be teams copy, replace, and teams. So it's that they are identical. So we can just close this and go back to gonna Django and find the main urls.py because we want to import it here. Part API slash v1 include team.urls. Great. So now the Django app there is finished and we can set this task to done now we can run the server again so we have it running perfect we got no errors before i continue i just want to say thanks to my patreons if you too want to support me you will find a link to my patreon in the description below so the next step now is to store user information in Vuex because we need this later to connect the team to a user. So before I continue, I just want to go here and log out the user so I can log in again and get the information from the server. I can open up this so we will see here if we get any errors. If I now go back to store slash index to view uh, index to JS. And here I want to add the object user ID can default to zero and username can default to empty. And then in here, when I know that we have a token, we also would have stored a username in the local storage. So here we can say state.user.username equals local storage dot get item username make a copy of this 
and rename this to ID and user ID. So we store them as username and user ID in the local storage. And if this if this is not the case, we need to set state.user.id zero state.user.username to empty. And I also want a function for setting the user. So then I can just say set user state and then we get the object which is user state.user equals user. So now we need to implement this in the login function as well. So if I scroll down and find login.view, just want to make this a little bit smaller. So at the bottom below this await axios, I want to create a new axios function. And I also want to call await on this because I want to do it before the loading is set to false. So await axios.get and to get information about the user, we can say slash API v1 slash users slash me. And this will give us the ID of the user and the username. This is default from Joser. Dot then and I get the response, create a fat arrow function. And then we say this dot dollar sign store dot commit set user. And then we create the object ID response dot data dot ID. This is the ID we get from the server. And then a username response dot data dot username. And this object here is the one we are sending and getting here, which is the user, and it contains the ID and username. Great. And when that is done, we can save the information in the local storage. Local storage dot set item username response dot data dot username and local storage dot set item user id response dot data dot id so now we have information about the user here and then we can console log if there are any errors console log error and close that and one important thing to do now is to just copy this from there or cut it out i mean because we can't redirect you here we need to wait until this is finished so in here we move the router uh, push to the my account great so now we can save this and set it to done but we can test it just so we know that everything is working. So if I go back to the browser, log in, then I log in with the user I created in the previous part. Okay, that's wrong. There. Okay, and now everything here should be okay. This is just because I didn't log in on the first attempt. So if I go back, you can just test that we have this information. Then in this here, after we have initialized the store, we can say console.log this.store.state.user. Save, go back. And you can see here, we have the ID and the username. So now we have information about the user stored locally as well. Perfect. And I want to do this exact same thing, but just for the team. So we have information about the team name and the team ID in the view X as well. So I can just go back here again. And then I say team, make this an object, ID, zero, name, empty. And I can make a copy of this because we need to use this as well. So team.name and team.id 
I want to store this as team underscore name and team underscore ID. And I will say state oops dot team dot ID zero state dot team dot name equals empty. And before I forget it, I just want to log out again so we don't have any problem but with not having this information in the local storage. And then below the set user, we say set team self team state dot team equals team. And we can actually use uh, this function to store the local storage as well. Local storage set item team id is team dot id and local storage dot set item team name is team dot name and this object we will get from the front end very soon great and that's it here for now so we can just save this and we can set the toast to done because i don't want to add this to the login view quite right uh, quite yet because uh, I need to fix this that if you don't have a team you will be sent to a create team page because we don't have a team in the back end yet or in the database. So this is then the next task and that's actually quite easy because you can just go into app.view and after this has been set we can say if not this dot store dot state oops dot team dot id so if this is not set and zero will also return false then we say this dot router dot push slash dashboard slash create or add team so when you don't have a team now you will be sent to this page so i can set this to done And if I now go back here and log in, user, yes, as you can see here, I don't have a part called slash dashboard slash add team, but we will create it very soon. And that's the reason why I couldn't be redirected there. But the next step now is to create a page for adding teams. So in the dashboard, create a new file, add team.view then I can copy a little bit information from one of the other pages copy this top add team close it close this div this div and the template and then let's create a script tag export default name add team script and then I can go back to the router and import it here add team and scroll down and I can make a copy of this for example add team add team and add team. So if I go back now, refresh, you will see that I see the add team. Great. So now we need to add a little bit more information here because here we want a form. And I think we already have a form in the add lead. So I can make a copy of this whole block here and then just remove a little bit from it. Paste it below there. And I only want one field actually, like that. So this can be renamed to name, which is the name of the team, or team name to be extra, extra sure. And then rename this vmodel to name. And when this is submitted, we call the submit form function methods submit form like that 
and here I also want to use the axios and the toast that I can copy from this I want to write that now like that and we also need the data object here to connect the name field to down here so data return name and it's default to empty of course and then I just want to make one more copy and that is the is loading functionality so paste that there paste and set to false and then in here I can say await axios dot post post slash api v1 slash teams and we want to pass in an object called team and no i have not created that yet so i can go up here as a const team equals object name is this dot name which is the information from here which we get from here great then we get the dot then response and when that's done we want to add the toast so i can copy that from this page as well and the router push paste the team was added and when that's done i just want to redirect this back to the dashboard page and when the team is created we get information about the team back from the server automatically so here we can set this dot store dot commit set team now we just want to pass in an object here which is id response.data.id and the name which is response.data.name and this we can just say this.name since we have it here already great and if there are any errors we need to show them dot catch error fat arrow function console log error and save so if i now go back okay there is a little error yes sorry i forgot to add async here great so now we can try to create a team code with stein submit the team was added but i see an error here state is not defined so the team was not set okay why okay the problem is in here i think this should not say self it should say state so great i can save that and we can go back to the to-do list and set this to done because now we need to fix the login to implement teams as well so when we log in we get information about the team we just log out so we can test it out when it's finished the first thing we need is to create a view for this so if i find the team app here first i need to import a little bit of functionality from the rest framework from rest framework import Oh, framework dot decorators import api view and i also need to import one more thing from rest framework dot response import response because you now want to create a, a new view a little bit more manually and then we say api view decorator that this view should only accept get requests and then we can create it and then we can create the view by saying def get team request actually it should be get my team and then we can get the team by saying team equals team dot object dot filter created by equals request dot user now we want to get the first in that list serializer we want to use for the team 
is team serializer and I can just pass in this object and we get the information from here as well. So then we can just say return response serializer dot data. Great, so that's the view. And then we want to import this to the URLs. So append it after there, get my team. And then at the bottom here, we can say path teams slash get my team and get my team name, get my team and save. So now we should be able to get information about the team from the back end, but we need to make a little change to the front end as well. So if we just go back to login.view, we need one more function like this. So await axios.get slash API v1 teams get my team. And this will give us information back. And here we can then say this dot store dot uh, commit set team create the object id response dot data dot id and name response dot data dot name. Now we have stored this in view x and when we do that, we also save it in the local storage here automatically. Great. So then we can move this router push down here actually. And we can console log the errors. Not there, but there. Great. So save that. But before we test this, I just want to go to my account page. And we remove the token from the local storage. I also want to remove username and user id and team name and team id like that great so then i can go back here try to log in like that okay i got a 404 error on the team why? Thought that should be okay, but it might be because of the order here. That it should be like this. Because if not, I think this router here thought that this could be the ID of a team or something similar. So I'll try to submit again. Now we was logged in and everything looks okay. So we can go back to upload view just to confirm that we have the team name. So here is a console.log this.store.state.team. And then yes, ID one name code with Stein. Perfect. So now we have information about the team and the user as well here in the front end. So then I can set this task to done and that was it for this part. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did please hit like below and remember to subscribe if you haven't already and click the bell if you want email notification when the next part is published. See you in the next video.